as I talked about at the very end last time, the next part of this unit is called separable differential equation. The separable differential equation is just any differential equation where you have a function of x being multiplied by a function of y. So something of you know this form, f of y times g of x. And it may look like uh, you know, some function in terms of x divided by some function in terms of y, but you know, effectively that's just exactly the same thing. And so our method for solving these types of differential equations, separable differential equations, is going to just be to separate the variables. We're going to get all of the y terms onto the left-hand side and leave our dy over there. And then we're going to get all of our x terms um, over on the right-hand side. It'll, they'll already be there. And we'll move the dx over to that right-hand side, so that multiplying both sides by dx. So it's going to look something like this. 1 over f of y dy is equal to g of x dx. And then all we'll have to do is anti-differentiate both sides of this. Um, and then we'll end up solving for y to find the solution for our differential equation. So that's going to be our process. We're going to look at a couple different ones here today and shouldn't be too bad. So our first one is going to be dy dx equals x times y, that quantity squared. And we're going to solve for y with the uh, initial condition that when x is 1, y is 1. Um, so our first step is just going to be to rewrite this as x squared y squared so that it looks like a function of x times a function of y. And so then we'll just divide both sides by y squared. So that'll effectively just give us a dy over a y squared. And we'll multiply both sides by dx. So we'll now just have x squared dx on the right-hand side. And then we'll go right ahead and integrate this. And on the left-hand side, the integral of dy over y squared, or y to the negative 2 dy, is just negative 1 over y, or negative y to the negative 1. And uh, for the first and, and first one here, and probably for the last time, I'm going to put a constant here with that. But we'll see why we're not going to do that anymore afterwards. Um, and then we'll integrate x squared to just give us x cubed over 3. And then we'll have some other constant over here. And hopefully, just looking at that, you can recognize why it doesn't really matter um, to, if we put a constant on the left side and the right side. Because, well, as soon as I try to solve solving for y, I can just subtract one constant to the other, and it just becomes one constant, right? C2 minus C1 is just some other constant. So really, all I'm going to do when I do these is I'm not going to put a constant on the side with the y. I'm just going to put a single constant over here on the side with the x. And, and you, don't, yeah, you don't need to write C1 and C2. Just do this every time. Just skip straight down to this step. And so now, um, just like when we were doing our other differential equations, we have to find the value of C by plugging in 1 for x and 1 for y. So on the left-hand side, we're going to get negative 1. And on the right-hand side, we'll get 1 third plus C. Of course, C is negative 4 thirds. And so we'll take that and... We'll throw it back in to right here. Negative 1 over y is equal to x cubed over 3 minus 4 thirds. And of course, we can combine that together to become x cubed minus 4 all over 3. And in order to solve for y, we've got to do two things. We've got to multiply by negative 1 or divide by negative 1. And we've got to take a reciprocal. And since this is just a singular fraction here, we can just take the reciprocal of it. And so uh, we'll just do it all in one step. If I multiply by negative 1 to this fraction over here, I can just flip the signs of the x cubed into negative 4. So that'll turn that into a 4 minus x cubed. And because I'm taking the reciprocal, that's going to get thrown down in the denominator. And then in the numerator, we'll just have a 3. And just like all the other problems that we've done uh, previously with the differential equations is we're going to have to look for the interval on which this is valid. So we have to think about what possible values of x might make this undefined. And we don't have to worry about values of y 
for example, like over here, we know that y is never going to be zero, right? That that doesn't really matter. That's not going to affect us in this problem. So um, we'll just go right ahead and take four minus x cubed and set it equal to zero, giving us x cubed is equal to four, and x is the cube root of four. So this would be our domain restriction, right? X can't be the cube root of four because that would make the bottom of that fraction zero. And just like with the previous one, even though we think about the domain being negative infinity to the cube root of four, and then union cube root of four to infinity, we only want to select the single piece of it that makes the um, initial condition, or where our initial condition lies. And so the piece of that that makes, uh, or that, that includes our initial condition of x equals one is actually the first piece of it here. Okay. This part of it includes x equals one, because one is less than the cube root of four. So we'll say four negative infinity to the cube root of and that's our solution to this first separable differential equation. So here we're looking at dy dx equals y divided by x. And so we're just going to do the same thing. So we're going to separate the variables. So we'll end up with dy over y equals dx over x. And we can integrate both sides of this. To get natural log absolute value y equals natural log absolute value x plus some constant. And again, we'll note that we're just putting the constant on one side, even though technically both of them have a constant. But when we subtract one constant to the other, it just leaves us with one. So now we'll evaluate for our initial condition. Natural log 2 equals natural log 2 plus c, or c equals zero. So essentially all we're looking at then here is natural log absolute value y is equal to natural log absolute value x. And uh, in order to solve this, we'll just need to exponentiate both sides, raise them both as powers of e, just giving us absolute value y is equal to absolute value of x, or y is equal to positive or negative absolute value of x. <clears throat> and then we'll go back and we'll think about any restrictions. And now there's no restrictions on absolute value of x, but one thing we have to keep in mind when we're doing these differential equations is that as soon as we um, anti-differentiate, we have to start thinking about what our restrictions might be. So as soon as I anti-differentiate right down here, I can think about any restrictions on the value of x. And so right here, I know that I can't take the natural log of zero or negative, but it's never going to be negative because of the absolute value. So we'll just say that x cannot be zero. Our potential domain is negative infinity to zero, union zero to infinity. And we'll pick the one of those that includes our initial condition of x equals two which is zero to infinity. And we'll also have to go back over here and select whether we want the positive or the negative value of this. And we'll note that the absolute value can just kind of fall off because when we select a zero to infinity, the absolute value of X is just equal to X. And if X is going to equal two, when Y equals two, that means we just want Y equals X for zero, all right, so for this one, we've got dy dx equals y plus 5 times x plus 2. And again, it's going to be the exact same process that we've been following here. We're just going to divide by y plus 5. So we have dy over y plus 5 equals x plus 2 dx. <clears throat> and now we'll just integrate. And dy over y plus 5 is just a quick, quick, simple u sub. One of the ones I told you would be good if you could 
you get to the point where you can do those in your head. Right? If u is y plus five, then du is just dy. Right? So this effectively just becomes du over u or natural log absolute value u. And then on this side, it's just power rule x squared over two plus two x plus our constant. And we'll plug in y equals one and x equals zero to get natural log six is equal to zero plus zero plus our constant, or our constant is just natural log of six. So we've got natural log absolute value y plus five equals x squared over two plus two x plus natural log six. And in order to finish solving this, again, we're gonna have to exponentiate both sides, but this time as we do that, uh, we'll note that e to the natural log of absolute value y plus five becomes just absolute value y plus five. But this second piece over here, the, the x squared over two plus two x plus ln six, um, that has to stay up in, in the exponent. But what we will do is we will think about this as if it is e to the a plus b, right? Where a is x squared over two plus two x and b is natural log of six. And if you think about your exponent rules, e to the a plus b is the same as e to the a times e to the b. So I can rewrite this as e to the x squared over 2 plus 2x times e to the natural log 6. And the reasoning for doing that is because we know that e to the ln 6 is equal to 6. And I know that I've told you a lot of times you don't need to simplify things, but this is one simplification that I am going to require you to do. I'm going to make sure that if you have an L and 6 up in that exponent, that you find a way to pull that out as a, as a 6 in front or, you know, natural log of any constant. And to clear off the absolute value here on the y plus 5, we need to put a plus or a minus. And then um, our last step is just going to be to get that 5 to the other side, negative 5 plus or minus 6 e the x squared over 2 plus 2x. Two but this is not a good solution um, for two reasons. One, we haven't checked for an interval on which it's valid. So let's first do that. If we go back to right when we first integrated, right here, x squared over 2 plus 2x two plus c, there's no restrictions there. And if we look on the next page, all the way along through here, there's no restrictions on the value of x. So this is good for negative infinity to infinity. Um, we're, not gonna, we're actually not going to write that yet because we still have to select whether we want the plus or the minus here. And our initial condition, what's going to tell us which one, we know that when x is 0, y is 1. So 1 is equal to negative 5 plus or minus 6 e to the well, 0 squared over 2 plus 0 is just 0. So effectively, we've got 1 is negative 5 plus or minus 6. We must have the plus. So we're going to say y is negative 5 plus 6 e to the x squared over 2 plus 2x. Two and this is valid for negative infinity to infinity. And you don't necessarily need to write that domain uh, if there's no actual restrictions. So that's it for that one. So this is the last one of these that we're going to do um, before we move on to some new topics next time. Um, we're going to solve this one with another initial condition that x is 0 when y is 2. So to rewrite e to the x minus y so that it looks like a function of x times a function of y, we're just going to use exponent rules and call this e to the x over e to the y. And now when we separate the variables, we'll have e to the y dy equals e to the x dx. We'll integrate both sides, which is very easy here. e to the y is equal to e to the x plus our constant. And we'll solve for that constant by evaluating this when x is 0 and y is 2. So e squared equals e to the 0 plus c, or c is equal to e squared minus e to the 0, which is 1. So we end up with a constant 
of e squared minus one. So we'll go right back in, we'll plug that in and get e to the y is equal to e to the x plus e squared minus one. And then in order to finish solving this, all we have to do is take a natural log of both sides. So the natural log of e to the y is just y. And here we have natural log of e to the x plus e squared minus one. And over the years, I've noticed a common mistake that a lot of people make for some reason here is, you know, when we integrate one over x, we get natural log absolute value of x. And for some reason, I found that students start just throwing absolute value around natural logs whenever they use natural log. Like, they'll just give me an answer like natural log absolute value e to the x plus e squared minus one. But, but that's not right. Please don't make that mistake. And similar on this problem, sometimes we'll end up with e to the negative y dy. A lot of people will end up integrating that incorrectly. I know that wasn't in this problem, but just kind of reminds me here that uh, I've seen this mistake a lot. Right? e to the negative y dy does not integrate to become e to the negative y. Right? You have to do a u substitution with the negative y. So it actually ends up becoming negative e to the negative y. So just be extra careful about that as you're doing problems in the homework and on the test and on the AP test. So the only thing that's left here is to think about any restrictions on the domain. And we know that natural log can't be negative, and we know that natural, we can't take the natural log of uh, zero. So we can't take the natural log of a negative number or natural log of zero. So we have to think about e to the x plus e squared minus one. Well, we know that e to the x is always positive, and we know that e squared is more than one. So e squared minus one is going to be positive, and e to the x is positive. If I take two positives and add them together, I get another positive, so there should be no restrictions on our domain. Uh, I didn't, didn't talk about it, but if we look as we go through right after we integrated, e to the x doesn't have any restrictions either. So nothing to worry about there. And so that is our solution. And that is going to be the last um, separable differential equation that we're going to do for today. Next time, we're going to look at um, some applications of separable differential equations that you've seen in some previous math classes. Um, but probably didn't actually have any idea where the formulas and equations that you were using to solve problems actually came. So that will be next time. That's it for today.